Gun test on Yeah, you know that's us. Where we only speak the real and the real rock with us. Where we motivate the people and politic on success. Oh no, we ain't DJ Kelly, but they swear we the best. Gun test on Gun test on What's happening? It's Contrast Uncut. It's season three, episode 41. Man, big shout outs to Uncle Snoop's Army and Bobby D Presents. I appreciate you, brothers. It's your host, Zylo, aka DJ Juan Dollars, like I won some money. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have a really, really dope special guest. He's from Florida, but he's currently out the ATL, Atlanta, Georgia. He's an entrepreneur. DJ host, the music director, and primetime eating this spot radio personality for the streets 94.5. I mean, his brother got a lot of things going on. He's also the host of his own show on Baller Alert. He's a foot action influencer. The brother got kicks. You know, Defiance Fuel brand ambassador, distinguished and award winning host and DJ. He's played an instrumental role in, in so many different powerful artists that's coming out in the game. And I mean, Little Baby, Megan Thee Stallion, The Baby, Jack Harlow, and many more. If you don't know who I'm talking about, it's all good. We got all episode to chop it up with Rari, Ferrari Simmons, brother. How you doing? Man, I'm good, man. That was a nice intro, man. I might need to, uh, you know, take some notes on that. That was that was pretty. That was pretty good, man. Oh man, all love, brother. Sure, I appreciate writing such incredible just energy, bro. That's just you know all that is just positive energy and and real hard work. It's being an outlier and, you know, separating yourself from others so that you can see your own success. Well, thanks. So, brother, I got a quote, you know, let me know how the quote relates to you or if it doesn't, it's all good. The idea is, I want you to talk about it, Rory. Ideas? No, 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 I got a quote. You know, let me know how this relates to you. Okay, I'm, I'm ready. All right, here we go. When all my hard work is getting recognized, it makes me work even harder. Gucci man. I mean, yeah, that's real. I mean, you know, it, it depends on what type of person you are. For me, uh, a quote like that is just, just symbolizes like the hard worker. Like you just want to continue to keep working. It's kind of like you get to drive and and you you taste it and then you just want more. You know what I'm saying? So that's a quote that shoot any person who really is trying to get it, they they hear that quote and be like, yeah, I can identify with that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in the introduction, it's it's all through there because uh, all your hard work is being recognized, and I'm, you know, it's an honor to be able to talk about it throughout the show. And you know, I gotta let you know right now. On top of that, time's the most finite thing we have on this earth. So I wanted to make sure you know right now that I appreciate your time greatly for coming on the show and rocking, and you know, getting into your history. No, for sure. So talking about the music industry and and you know, radio and everything. Did the game choose you or did you choose the game? Um, I want to say a little bit of both. Uh, I was trying to, I was trying my best to figure out my lane because I started trying to rap. And um, I did two to three different things around that. I, um, radio wouldn't play my song. So I said, okay, well, I'm still in college. Let me do college radio and then play my song. And um, that's when I actually realized how good I was in radio because anytime um, I did do my radio show on college campus, people would be talking about it. Anytime I went to class or the president of the university was listening. And um, it wasn't until she told, once she told me that, I said, okay, I'm gonna take this serious. So that's when I kind of stopped rapping and was like, you know what, let me try to figure out how to get on the radio. Man, I think it's incredible how people, you know, they think of an idea and instead of having the excuse of how to get it on there, they find a way to make that excuse the reason to get it on there. Okay. And, you know, it's incredible. So I got to ask, you know, what was your first confirmation after you left the university, you know, that, you know, music in, is what you're supposed to invest your life in and what you're supposed to do? Um. Well, I, okay, so at that point, after I left the university, it was kind of hard for me because um, I tried to get onto the radio. Now, this is something that a lot of people don't know. It's extremely hard to kind of get on the radio only because it's only about three to five people that are on staff. Your morning show has maybe 
two, it could be one, but that's kind of hard to have just one. He has to be an extremely powerful person. But the more, your morning show usually has about four people. Then you have your next slot that's usually from 10 a.m. to uh, 2 p.m. That's your midday. That's always one person. It's never two people. Your afternoon is always usually just one person. It's never two people. Then your night show could any be, be anywhere from one to two people. It's never a lot of people of, on a staff on the radio. So therefore, your chances already off top is slim. And I mean, one of them may be a program director in one of them slots as well. Exactly. Man, you smart when you said that. Cause, and then sometimes your night show guy could be the program director or it could be the APD, the assistant program director, or the promotions person. So people in the radio are doing multiple jobs at all times. So you have to be very incredible, almost perfect for someone to say, to stop what they're doing because they are already fully staffed. Usually radio is always fully staffed. So it was very discouraging because I tried to get on the radio in Tampa while I was at, and you know, it was just, it was get I was getting no's, but so I was like, all right, well, I'm gonna just move to Atlanta. Um, I had been going to Atlanta every summer since I was in middle school. And uh, I was like, you know, my sister had lived in Sewanee at the time. So I was like, you know, I'm just moved to Atlanta. I had a couple college buddies that went to Atlanta and was living there. So I crashed on their couch, slept on the air mattress and mm. uh, I had to get a day job. I had a day job. I lit, I, uh, you know, I'm a hustler. So I worked in an apartment complex so I can get discount on my rent. Yeah, I get 30% off, you feel me? So 30% off my rent. Uh, free cable, um, and now I'm still trying to figure it out. But my big break came when I met DJ Holiday, and uh, DJ Holiday let me come around. And he, he, for some reason, he said he liked me, and he was like, "Man, you know, um, I rock with you. Uh, just come, just stay around." And uh, when he got his first radio show at Streets 945, this is in 2012, um, I was just able to come in the building with him and help him create his show. So that was, yeah, that was 2012, but I left, it was a large gap. I graduated college in 2006. So uh, it was a large time frame that I was just around, just trying to figure it out. You know, I just didn't quit and I just kept having a plan. And when he got his show, he was like, yo, come on. I want you to come up here with me. Um, I wasn't getting paid. Um, and that's a lot of, that's a, a big thing too. A lot of people on radio in the beginning of their careers don't get paid. That's when people quit. You know, a lot of people, sometimes they get given opportunities because some, you know, they know somebody, they know somebody or they family know somebody in other elements, you know, you have to work for, it. you got to start from the bottom and, you know, take whatever you can to be in there and be okay with how it goes. You still got to be smart. You know, you can't get played for a sucker, but you still got to be want to be okay with running. You know, they say go get this and it's seven stories down. Boy, you're going seven stories down, seven stories up. That's your routine. Right. Thanks. It's hunger. And so, you know. I had them. Yeah. And no, you're still humble. You're still hungry to this day because, you know, as you know, as we keep on talking about it, you know, you've had an incredible run so far and it's still going. I can see so much more in the tunnel vision that you have. Plan A is all about plan A. Plan B supports plan A. And plan C is a branch to connect to the roots to plan A. Exactly. I like that. I like that breakdown. That's the, I, I live by that. There is no plan B. Plan B is to make sure plan A happens. <laughs> you feel me? Absolutely. Absolutely. So I want to go into your highs and lows. You know, okay. we talked about them roots. We talked about plan B. But I want to go ahead and just go into... What, what it takes, you know, because what you consider your highs and what you consider your lows? Uh, I would say I definitely, um, I had a high and low. We had a high and low at the same time. I, I, I never can say I did it anything by myself. I had people around me and people I worked with to experience it together. I mean, myself and Fly Guy DC, we, um, we had got our first radio show 2017. It was January 9th, 2017. And, um, no, a lot of people didn't believe in us. What? A lot of people didn't believe in us. Uh, a lot of people thought that, you know, we weren't going to work out. You know, a lot of people thought we had ego problems with you know, how how were we going to work. You know, was his ego and my ego going to be an issue? Um, and uh, at the time, th th this is a true story. So it's actually on my YouTube page. I have, I was interviewing the baby. I actually snuck the baby at the station. His that's why me and his manager are so tight. Um, I snuck him up there, 
this 2017, he went by Baby Jesus at the time. I saw him at South by Southwest with the diaper on, right? But I, th I just, I saw past what he was doing and I saw him. I was like, yo, I like him. The I, I looked, I listened to his music. I thought he was dope. And, and it just so happened his manager used to rap. And I was like, yo, let's have him come up to the station. I'm doing something called The Dungeon where I let artists come to freestyle. And um, I want him to be my first person. He was the first artist in my dungeon. And um, it was him. I remember Lil Baby, that was in July. Actually, my bad, I'm lying. April, no, March. Lil Baby uh, had got out of jail in 2016. He started rapping. Um, Th Young Thug told, convinced him to continue to keep rapping. And um, he signed a Wolfpack. Um, and I, his, his big dog, Biggs, who's over Wolfpack, um, had a record. He was called uh, Grinding. And he came up to the radio station. We, we did his first ever radio interview at Streets 945. And um, I actually got in trouble for uh, for playing his radio, his song on the radio. Um, I believe it was Grinding featuring Future. I can't remember who was featuring, but um, I got in trouble. This is when I was interviewing all these people. Derez Deshaun, um, same thing. Uh, this is the in the beginning of their career. So I'm over here like, yo, y'all dope. I'm going to get in trouble. I don't care because I think y'all dope. Me and Fly Guy DC was, and that's when my boss was, me and my boss was at, you know, at odds. And, you know, he was like, why you keep interviewing these no-name artists? Mm. It's 2017. Because your ear is buzzing and you understand quality music. It's timeless now. And I'm looking two years ahead, Megan The Stallion too. She went by Tina Snow. When I met, uh, we met Carl from 1501. They wasn't even pushing her. They was, Ah, oh, I forgot the artist's name. They was pushing a different artist and she just so happened to be with them. And he was like, yeah, she's dope. And we didn't start playing her song until 2018 when she had a uh, big old freak. And I got in trouble for that record too. Um, the big old freak record. But I remember we met Meg. <laughs> huh? Yeah, we met Meg in 2017, man. And she says it in an interview, it's on my IGTV. She, you know, and little baby, that's on my main Instagram page. When he stops the interview and was like, I appreciate you and Rari. He says, Fly Guy DC, I appreciate you and Rari for going hard with me in the beginning before everybody. It's, in, it's all in my DMs. Da yeah, Baby wow. too. Uh, Roddy Rich, same thing. I got DMs. My DMs is lit from these guys. I remember when Roddy Rich had 5,000 followers. Come on. For a crazy story about Roddy Rich, this is 2018, uh, London on the track. That's me and Fly Guy DC's guy. Him and DC are super tight. He sends us the record, Die Young record, way before we're supposed to play it. We got in trouble for playing that record. You know, and around that time frame, we wasn't getting no credit for what we were doing. You know, because we were just standing on records and, and, and pushing them. And then when they blew up, they kind of went to, you know, the Greg Streets and the Dirty Boys and, and all the bigger places. But they started with me and Fly Guy DC because I was the one like, you know, saying, yo, you're dope. Jack Harlow, he had, um, I had a good friend of mine, Andrea. Um, she hit me and was like, yo, I got this dude. He just graduated high school not too long ago. Um, I want to bring him up there for the dungeon. I was like, yeah, bring his ass up there. Um, so he came up and did a freestyle. That's on my page too. If you scroll down on my Instagram page. And then and John I know he he's in the, the uh, um, He's doing an interview with DJ Drama, and then next thing I know, he's signed a generation now. So I'm over here like, whoa, wait a minute. So that's when that happened, I'm over here like, wait, should I have been getting paid for this? Should I have been managing these people for what we were doing? Because I, I didn't know what we was doing at the time. You know what I'm saying? Fly Guy DC and I didn't know what we were doing. I'm calling CEO P from Quality Control like, yo, this is the record. That's the My Dog record. And, um, you know, it wasn't until the artists started really giving us credit for what we were doing and me kind of saying, I had to start standing on shit too. Like, I, sorry for cursing, but I had to start standing on things for, for people to start saying, you know what, you, you were there, you were doing this. And I had to start posting receipts of, he was here in 2017 with us in March. I remember, I had a conversation. You're going to get this exclusive. Me and Greg Street had a conversation. He, for some reason, the V103, he was talking, he said he, said he posted, he did, he broke the My Dog record, which it takes a collective amount of people to break a record. It's not just going to be one person. But when he called me 
I said, Big Dog, I wasn't talking about the My Dog record. We had Lil Baby at the radio station in March, Big Dog, with a completely different record. His first ever radio interview. You didn't even know who he was then. I'm pretty sure you were you have heard about him around then, but we had him at the station interviewing him. That was just an example of something that I had to kind of say, nah, this is what happened because I was there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah, 2017, it was hard, bro. Like it was hard. Like Cardi B, the Bodak Red, the Bodak Yellow Red. The reason I got this plaque is because the late I had to cry. Man, listen, bro. When they handed these plaques out, I called the I said, where my plaque at? I was like, where my plaque at? Because I got in trouble for playing Bodak Yellow on the radio. Before everybody, it was DJ Alpo. He played that song, 2017. Swear to God, true story. He played the record. We made him run it back. Got a phone call. Why y'all playing that dumbass record? Nah, 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 nah. Don't play that record. We stood on that record. I said, nah, you tripping. It's the hottest record. She about to be the hottest thing since sliced bread. Swear to God. So when these plaques came out, and I'm over here like, yo, what's going on? So I called the, uh, the label rep and went off. I was on a family vacation, bro. I was in Orlando at SeaWorld. Never forget. I was like, oh, hell no. Oh, hell no. You better, you, better, you better check the BDS spins. We was playing this record before everybody. Come on. Got in trouble. Like, job on the line, like, I'm about to get written up. I actually got suspended for playing the Lil Baby record too many times in the 8 o'clock hour at my job. I got suspended for one day without pay. Wow. For playing my dog too many times. But, like, my thing was I was, really, I was willing to put my job on the line. And I kid you not, these artists remember that shit. And I remember I got a call for Complex Magazine. Um, about Lil Baby. He mentioned me in the interview and they called me and I verified it and it was dope. You know what I'm saying? It was just, everything started happening years later and I'm over here like, damn, man, like, shit. Because 2017 was rough. I, I, we was getting in trouble. Um, and it, It's more artists and sometimes we were wrong. Sometimes we interviewed other artists and they didn't pop. You know what I'm saying? But the ones that we, we were right on, we were more right than wrong. Come on. You know what I'm saying? And uh, shoot, that's why we got the make only 15 people got this Megan the Stallion plaque in Atlanta. And we get we, we getting another one. This is um the big old freak plaque. Yeah. I've had like, someone got in trouble, bro. Like, you know, yeah. It's, it was hard. I ain't gonna front, it was hard. Going right. through. Bro, I've had Lil Jew made the beat on here, bro. And, you know, that was a song that, you know, was the first thing to help format their bond and how they was going to start making music together. And so it's dope. But at the same time, it's important to understand the brilliance of, you know, what you're willing to sacrifice. You're willing to sacrifice it all just because you understood the value of your ear. Yeah. And after that, I started getting, this is around 2019. Now I'm getting phone calls from Everybody, I'm talking about whoever you could think of. Uh, Future sending me and Fly Got DC songs to play first. Uh, you know, everyone but Drake. I ain't, I ain't get a Drake phone call yet. But, you know, uh, damn near everybody else, shit. Everybody else you could think of, I get a phone call. And then when now, it's to a point where now, when the artists drop an album, I tell them what song. Like, I told uh, King Carter, that's the baby, one of the baby's managers, I said, Rockstar is going to be a number one record. And I was completely right. I heard it. As soon as it came out, I was like, oh, yeah, this is it. This is the record. I, and, you know, I'm, ru I'm bluntly, rudely honest. And I think a lot of people keep me around for that, too. It's important, bro. It's important to say how you feel and know to stick to your guns, especially when you're talking about something that, that you know is eclectic to your ear, where yeah. other people is trying to force something because they got the money behind it. They got this behind it. So they got a whole different draw of attention versus you come in there, no bias, opinion, or nothing and lay it real, and they like, shit, ain't no one else saw it like that. Ain't no one else pitched it like that. And then, yep. you know, it's it's history. And so, no, them is incredible highs, brother. Them is some interesting lows. Like, the lows prepared you for the high, so when you got to enjoy it, you are high enough that you got to look past all the bullshit and be like, man, this is where the real value came from. Now, yeah, and it, you know, uh, it's to a point where now, like, it's kind of like the highs are, it's dope, but it was like, it's kind of like, finally, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm over here like, 
I've been I've been this way, you know, I've been doing this. It's kinda like, oh now y'all wanna now y'all wanna tell me I'm a radio legend. Okay. I felt that way before that. But you know, I gotta stay make sure I, I keep a level head at all times because you don't wanna come off arrogant or cocky in my line of work because my job is to provide clout. I'm the I'm the person who's telling people this is the next big thing or this person is dope. So it's important to keep a level head at all times. That's why sometimes certain people, uh, when I see in media that get too arrogant, it's always their downfall. Yes, sir. I agree. I agree. It's important to keep that humbleness inside that mixture no matter what. No matter what you sipping on, make sure some humble tea is added in there. Oh, you will get humble, either or. Whew. Man, reality, boy, and how the universe works, boy, the lines will come across and you'd be like, shit, that shit missed me. Thanks. So I got to ask, you know, because you've done incredible interviews. I'm a fan. Like, you know, I've watched some of your stuff. Like, you you know, you, you're definitely cultured into the game. And so my question to you is how much time and preparation goes into your interviews and, like, what's your goal for each interview? Um, It's kind of cool because I don't really prep too much because I'm already – I kind of know a lot about the artists off top. And especially like, for example, if I'm interviewing Lil Baby, I don't have to prep because I know everything about him. Number one, he's my favorite rapper. Uh, number two, I was a part of the process of, you know, him. You know, I'm a part of the, the process of, right. you know, when he was becoming a big artist, you know, you got a history. Yeah, I'm part of the history. So I, I know what we talk about, same thing with Migos. Now, uh, a, lot of a lot of times I actually don't say this in interviews, but I'll give you the exclusive like, I was a part of a lot of beginning things. The reason why I am the way I am is because I was around DJ Holiday when he was discovering people. So keep in mind, you got your, I'm with the wave of Lil Baby, the Baby, Megan Thee Stallion, Jack Harlow. That's my, when I'm on the radio, but I was also a part of things that happened with DJ Holiday because I was his, I was the little, I was the, his little homie back in 2013 when Thug, uh, Migos, Rich Homie Kwan, uh, YFN Lucci. I was around all of that stuff. So like the reason now, so now if I'm interviewing Amigos, I actually really know them. I remember when they was like crazy little niggas on some scamming shit, you know, before they had a big break, you know, uh, before they had, I was a part of that. I remember when K Camp was, wasn't making no money and was in the club, was looking crazy. I remember I was there. You know what I'm saying? Um, I was there. I was around Future. Now, keep in mind, I didn't have my own shit popping, but I was just around it and I saw it. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I can see firsthand how Future came from where he was at to where he's at now. I remember being around Drake, Big Sean, and J. Cole in the clubs. I just was, a, I was just, you know, a little homie at the time, too. So, I'm just paying attention. I'm over here like, damn, is that Wale? You know what I'm saying? I'm seeing, because Wale, uh, Big Sean, J. Cole, and um, Drake all used to come to Atlanta. They Everyone used to come to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And this is 2009, 2010, well, you know, when things are starting to pop for them. You know, so I'm around, I was around all of that, and I saw the process of how things worked. And I was just seeing, I was like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm a student of the game, so I'm paying attention to how things move and how things articulate themselves. You know what I'm saying? So now, when it's my turn, I could say, "Oh, I have a body of work that I've that I've witnessed and was a part of." So now it's easier for me to depict shit. You know, it's so important that you are able to pretty much break it down that you never accepted being the fly in the room. You decided to be the sponge and soak everything up that came out. And it's so important that you elevated from that. You just didn't accept that you were around it and you were near it. You took it and made something into it, and you're still evolving in that process. Because I mean. You know, I ain't gonna talk too much around the road, but I can see you as a big time record executive, a, a you know, someone that's really helping the urban point on certain labels so that they can get the right music across and select it, just based upon, you know, the details of what, what you absorbed. Now, yeah, it's, I, I've gotten uh, label job offers uh, actually within the past year and a half. Um, it's just, I'm, I'm a real deal Florida boy. I love warm weather. I hate cold weather. I think Atlanta is my, might be the highest I'll go. I don't, I don't know about the New York, bro. Like, it get real cold up there. I know people talking about you can hop on the plane and all that. 
I don't like, man, I don't be liking all that Chicago. I don't be liking all that cold weather, bro. Like, West Coast is kind of far because all my family is on, on in the, you know, in Florida and the East, on the East Coast. So that's kind of far away from existence. And that three-hour difference, I don't be liking that three-hour difference. You got to watch TV, Sports Center come on, and the games come on three hours. Nah, I don't be liking all that. So I think I'm in a perfect hub in Atlanta. So if the job ain't here, I'm just going to stay right here. That's just my personal opinion. <laughs> Fair enough. If it ain't willing to come to you, it ain't for you. Man. That's, hey, that's a blessing, too. Because, you know, as the game keeps on evolving, I mean, it's, it's going to make its way there. These people have to, I mean, I'm near L.A. I'm in a city called Bakersfield. And, like, but, you know, L.A. is, is – I love a, L.A. now. I love it. It gives me Florida vibes. But it's just, you know. So, you know, you know, a lot of people don't know the fact that all the palm trees in – LA, California are not from California. They take that from Florida and they plant that thing. And you know, they, they've been existed for hundreds of years, but they came from Florida. I, I just be, it'd be weird to see those tall palm trees though. Cause I don't really see, it's not too many. We have them and in, in the more south, south of Florida you go, they get a little bit more skinnier for people who, that's a weird fact. But, uh, Y'all have them everywhere, them tall ass palm trees. That's just amazing to me. And I, I like the vibe too. This is dope. Oh, brother, the city people that I was coordinating, I was like, put them here, put them here, put them here, put them here, put them here. And bro, I mean, even the sand is, is imported. They take their sand from Hawaii and put it on our beaches. Like, California is cold. We look nice, but you know, it takes some stuff to be added to it to look this way. Yeah, I, I love Cali. Um, I got family in San Diego, actually. Um, so when I do come, I make sure I go to San Diego and then, you know, shoot back up to LA. I, I've never been to, uh, you know what I've never been to? I've never been to North North, North Cali, like Oakland. And, um, you never been to the Bay? Nah, I got I, I to gotta do that. Yeah. I know it has, I know it has its own little culture too. And I think that's dope. Like, I've been to Atlanta and, you know, Oakland is is very close to it because, you know, it's very prideful. You know, the Black Panthers originated out there. Yeah. It's, it moves differently, but the love is so, it's it's like the South. Yeah. But it's dangerous. You don't want no problems with nobody from Oakland either, boy. People from Oakland, boy, they, they get down. <laughs> town business. Town business. Nice. You no, know, shout out to the Bay Area. And, uh, but, bro, you know, I do got to let you know the common denominator of my show is success. And if you haven't noticed, brother, you've definitely turned the 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 left, the right, kept going forward down that path of success. And, you know, there's a lot of people out there who are poverty stricken and they come from neighborhoods with limited resources and opportunities to make their passion, gift and dreams come true. You know, for some, they make it right away. Others work at it till it happens. And you have a lot of people that are afraid of success. They live in a cul-de-sac state of mind. And, you know, it takes building a bridge to success to obtain their goals and their dreams. And, you know, you've been able to do that constantly and constantly. You said, you know what, Tampa ain't working for me. I got I got the confirmation here. I need to go somewhere else that I know is, you know, comfortable for me. And then, you know, you flourished. And, you know, it's very important that it takes you to get out of your comfort zone to make something more confident and be comforted again. Because that's where greatness comes from. Yeah. You know, it was, it was hard, man. I ain't gonna front. Like, when I first moved up here, I'm a straight Florida boy, you know what I'm saying? And the first thing I moved up in the winter, now, off top, I was already upset because it gets cold. Where I'm from, it don't get cold at all, ever. Maybe 55 degrees, and we ain't going outside around that time frame, you know, around that degree type of weather. And I, I move up here, and it happened to be one of the coldest winters Atlanta's ever had. It's like 20 degrees. I don't like it. You still got to go out. And I, I didn't even own a jacket when I first moved up here. I didn't own a jacket, didn't know nothing about no stylish wares. You know, that's you can get stylish when it get cold. And I didn't know that lifestyle. I didn't know that lifestyle. And then just the, from the music, I had to really sit back, study the culture, pay attention to what was going on, and then, you know, just wait my turn. And it was very discouraging in the, in the beginning, I ain't gonna lie. Uh -huh. So my brother, I'm gonna put a pause on the entertainment questions. I'm gonna go into my three segments. And you know, we're gonna keep this interview rolling. And my first segment we're gonna talk about is my awareness segment. And you know, I'm talking about police interaction. Yeah, it's a hot topic in you know, reality right now because of the social injustice and everything going on. But 
you know, I've been doing this uh, it's like my hundred and thirty four thirty thirty first episode. <laughs> so I ask every guest the same question: When was the last time they were pulled over, and what's some advice they can give in the situation of being pulled over and interacting with the police? Um, I tend to get pulled over often uh, for some reason. I fit the profile of African American male. I wear jewelry. I drive a um, African American vehicle. I, you know, I got you know, I, I love me some Dodges, man. <laughs> so I got me a Dodge Durango, the new one. Got the stripes on it. Um, you know, sometimes depending on what what side of town you're at. I get off work. I work clubs, so I get off work three, four, five in the morning. I'm driving, baseball cap, just so happened to get pulled over. Maybe I, uh, I actually got pulled over uh, February, um, and I got a ticket. I didn't agree with the ticket, but due to the fact of all this going on, I just shut my butt up. I didn't say nothing, but I just felt like, you know, when he walked up to the window, I made sure my hand, I was recording it. I made sure my hands was free. I had my license and registration um, ready to go. Um, but yeah, I felt like I was unfairly uh, given a ticket. I didn't, the, the, the roof of my truck hood didn't come up. You know, you have to come up to a complete stop in the roof of your car. You have to stop, make your car stop, then you can go. I rode slightly, just a little bit. I got pulled over. He stuck his head in the car. <laughs> Smelled around, asked me if I had any drugs or weapons in the car. Yeah, all that. You know, it's crazy because, you know, we grew up in the hood. Like, you know, most people, they don't have to experience that. They got to stay at the stop sign for 10 seconds. You know, we, it'd be for real. Like me and my brother, we'd be driving and we see 5-0 behind us. We literally one 1,000, 2-1,000, 1, 3-1,000, 4-1,000. 1, 1, because one cop told us in the past that you got to stay at a stop sign for 10 seconds. And like, you know, That's how crazy. you... And bro, it's been embedded in us ever since. And you know how you said that you have to see it where where the car comes up like this. And I'm like, that's some shit. <laughs> like it's embedded in you that their terminology makes us, you know, see it a different way. Oh, and I forgot he put the thing on my windows to make sure my tents was on point. Crazy dog. It was crazy, man. And he asked me, he was like, This is a nice truck. And you write me my ticket, man. You write me my ticket real quick. You know, it's tough where at one point I was like, damn, you know, I take off my hat when I get in my car. You know, I don't know. It's, yeah, that that bothers me. I, I've always had an issue with stuff like that. And then, um, you know, uh, just being in Atlanta, we all look the same and we all could potentially fit the profile. So uh, they categorize us all the same. What are you doing? You know, sometimes, you know, I may smell like weed. And uh, have you been smoking? You know, just because I'm in the club. Because Atlanta's weird. Atlanta's weird. And this is, I'm not trying to be funny with this. All the clubs in Atlanta, you could just literally freely smoke weed. I'm talking about freely. But as soon as you walk outside the club, you can't just, you know, you can't just have it out like that because you know it's not legal here. Like how I know it's legal over there. So I, I but as weird as it sounds, we could be in the club rolling up. Puff puff pass. Or you could just have pull out your shit and just roll up. Stuff, you know, however you do, whatever you you do the uh, you know, uh, the leaf, or if you do the uh I like the combs, you know, I don't like all that leaf shit. I love the combs. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a backwood person myself, but I ain't yeah, not yeah, I, don't, I, I can't do the back. I don't like the I'm smell. But some people like it. But you know, I'm look, to each his own. But long story short, you know, um, you could be in a session. I DJ, so I could if if I decide not to smoke that day or whatever, um, I could be just around people who just been burning it down. And you know, we we smoke rapper weed over here just like y'all. So it's an it's a high potent potency. And you it's smell sticks. just like it. It sticks. It's a sticks on it's 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 a, it sticks on you. It's a cologne. You know what I'm saying? So now I'm in the car. And as soon as I roll the window down, he probably just think I'm in there blowing it down. I mean, really, reality, I just came from working. And uh, I feel like I find myself having to tell him, you know, I'm a DJ. I work on the radio. Just for them to be like, oh, okay. 
but it shouldn't even be like that, you know? And I have, I do have some relationships with some police officers in Atlanta. And for the most part, I would say the ones that I have relationship with, those are some solid guys, but there are some, you know, there are some guys like that, yeah, they, uh, for some reason, they out, they out to get you. Come that's on. My, that's my personal opinion. Man, not all of them can get caught on camera and get fired. Put it to you like that. Exactly. And they profile, they profile us uh, so, so much over here, you know, because, you know, Atlanta's a predominantly black city. You know, it's a lot of African-American Americans that live in Atlanta, but, uh, especially on the east side. Um, it's a lot. It's a high population of African-Americans. And you don't know who's a DJ, who's a rapper, who's a dope boy, who's a scammer, because we all dress similar, you know? So how is it that, I mean, you can really pay attention if you do, but they profile all of us into one category. Yeah, they make it easy on them. Yeah, so, you know. Scandalous as fuck. And then, you know, what if they are looking for someone that has a charger and it's black with white, it's, it's white with black stripes? We get you. You can probably count. You you lose fingers and toes counting how many Dodge Chargers out here in Atlanta. Hellcats. It's a whole, but everybody got a Hellcat out here. Everybody got a Trackhawk. Everybody got an SRT. You know that's just what we do, bro. Like it's just what we do. You gonna come to Atlanta and catch, catch the vibe, catch the sauce. But it, you know, for the police, you know, it's hard for them to kind of see see who's who. And I feel like they um unrightfully profile us. And you know, it's important to have awareness. I say this all the time. I got this from a cat. It, you know, it's, knowledge is power, but when you use that knowledge, it's your superpower. And you know, keeping your, your stuff ready, keeping your hands on the steering wheel, you know, understanding that, you know what, I got to film this and I got to get out of this as quickly as possible because his energy ain't right because he's pulling you over for no reason. You know, it's important to have all those things together so that you get out the situation as quickly as possible. Thanks. So my brother, I, you know, we talked about my awareness segment. We're going to get into my next segment. It's called Trading Places. It's like that movie, Dan Aykroyd, Eddie Murphy, they wake up and their lives have changed and, you know, they got to figure it out. And so for, I take that idea and concept and I take two iconic people and we talk about you. swapping their lives. Bless you. And, you know, we talk about uh, swapping their lives. For you, I got Trey Songs Trading Places with Channing Tatum. <laughs> Question number one is, will it work? Can you see Trey Songs as Channing Tatum? And can you see Channing Tatum as Trey Songs? I can see Channing Tatum as Trey Songs, but I can't see Trey Songs as Channing Tatum. Mm. Um, I don't know too much. Channing Tatum, I'm not really aware of the lifestyle. But Trey Songs, man, <laughs> you know, yeah, I mean, yeah, he ain't gonna, nah, it ain't going to be, <laughs> yeah, I, I see one person probably be like, yeah, that would be cool to be Trey Songs, but then I, I see Trey Songs like, nah, I don't want to be you. <laughs> what would be one thing different if they, you know, traded places, if that did happen? What, uh, I would say probably the women. <laughs> the just the fact I mean I've been around Trey I don't, I don't want to say that I know Trey but I've been around him uh, enough to know that you know I can kind of assume a certain lifestyle um, that he lives I, I, I don't really know um, Shannon Tatum's lifestyle to me to a point where I can art, art, articulately judge them switch trading places I, I would i would i would say the women though that would be a that would be something that i think that one person would be like oh this is dope and the other person would be like nah 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 nah, nah. <laughs> uh, you know i think trey songs would enjoy being magic mike i'm just saying <laughs> <laughs> you think so I mean, I'm pretty sure he does it on his own, you know, with, with a whole different type of environment that's greater for him. But I'm just saying, he may would have enjoyed it. You could be right. 
And I'm pretty sure Channing Tatum would love to have some people who have, you know, the neighbors know his name. Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. Channing Tatum would love to be Trey Song, I'm telling you. I don't necessarily <laughs> think Trey Songs would love to be Channing Tatum. So. so my brother, you survived that. I got this next thing called Impulse Q and A. It's like questions on cars. They're like from a fan yep. perspective. And so I'm going to hit you with it. You can pass on the question. If you don't like it, it's all good. I got another one for you, but you still got right. like three questions. All right, I'm ready. Question number one. What things do you do every day that you wish could be automated? Oh, man. Uh, make breakfast for my kids. Hell. I wish we could just walk downstairs and there's just be, I'd go like that. And it'd be <laughs> automated. <laughs> that would be, I got four kids, bro. It's a lot going on. I gotta tell you, you know, like my 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 seventeen year old, she just turned seventeen. I know I look like I'm twenty two years old, but I'm not. Um, my seventeen year old, she's got an internship, so you know, I'm I'm working like, you know, and then my uh, my wife, she uh, she she's um, social distancing from her job, so she works from home, so she works on our kitchen table. So I'm literally having to make breakfast, and I be tired, so it don't matter what time I get home. I got to get my ass up, make sure everybody eating. Um, Cause she's at work. She gets up at six 30 in the morning and goes to work downstairs in the kitchen. Wow. So yeah. So I got to get up and do breakfast the whole night. I wish that shit would be automated right now, right about now. Bro, before I go on to my second question, I, you know, I have it down on here that I got to give you your flowers, your roses for being a dedicated father and husband. But you said it right now, and you know it's more of a time to say it right now, bro. Salute you, brother. You know, being a dedicated father, dedicated husband, making that household go. And I gotta ask you, how do you balance? Ah, uh, that's what—that's actually my uh, why I am 100% faithful to my wife. She does a good job of creating balance for me. Um, we make sure, yeah, hey man, we make sure we have some time for us. But then, you know, there are times where. It's it gets a little it gets a little hectic. I ain't gonna lie to you. And sometimes I forget to tell her things. Like I I'm good at it now. Where we got a calendar. We have an app on our phones, on all our phones, and it has everyone's schedule. And then I have two two different managers to where you know I'm speaking to them, and they're updating the calendar for me. And you know sometimes things slip, but it's it's a it's a job like that. That shit is a job. And whoever thinks that you get in a relationship and you get to kick back and relax. Uh, that's not how relationships work. That's not how marriages work. That's not how parenting works because you got multiple jobs. Like you have, and then you have the parent. I don't know if you have kids, but I have four. Okay. Two. And you know, each kid is different. What may work for, I got three girls and one boy. What may work for my three-year-old is not going to work for Lil Rari. What's going to work for my 17-year-old? Each person has a different personality. My 17-year-old like, don't, don't like nobody touching her. She like her space. <laughs> like She don't like hugs or none of that. My three-year-old, oh, she hugging everybody. My, uh, my, my 12-year-old, she's not a morning person. She hates getting up. She hates going to school. She's an introvert, but she likes, uh, she's very creative. You know, she's a, she likes to paint. Lil Rari, he's all around. He loves getting up early. He loves talking in front of a lot. He talked in front of 10,000 people at a uh, at an event with my uh, with us at the radio station. And I damn near cried because I was like, wow, you're only nine or you're eight. And to do something like that takes guts at eight years old. You feel me? So just juggling everyone. He's, he does baseball. One person does volleyball. You know, bro, like one person runs track. That's a job by itself. And then now I got to make sure that I spend time with my wife. And oh, and by the way, my job is is demanding to get these plaques and all this shit right here to make money. You got to figure out a balance. And it's hard. Like that shit, that shit, you know, man, it's it's a downfall of a lot of people's relationships because you could be, because you have to be selfish at certain points with your career your family, your 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 personal relationship. You ha- there are times where you have to say, "All right, I can't do none of this shit right now. I I can't do it. Like I can't do it. I got to spend time with my family." And then it's times where I got to tell my family, "Hey, y'all, I'm not gonna be able to make the game because I have to go to work, and it sucks." But you know, I'm I've it's been times where I've missed Rory's uh, baseball game when I had to go 
um, to Miami with Jeezy because I had an obligation. Yeah. You know, uh, BT Hip Hop Awards, BT so- Social Awards. I have to be on the red carpet interviewing people. Provider. And what if it's what if it's on somebody's Sweet Sixteen birthday party? You know, I got to make a decision, and these these are tough decisions that are made and are that are handled, and nobody even knows. It's not it's not like we post that on Instagram or shit like that. It's just it's so much that goes into you know maintaining your your fam your family and maintaining your job. It's, that shit ain't no joke, bro. So I don't even know how I do it. I ain't gonna lie to you. I don't know. You said it. You said it. Scheduling. And you also understand the importance of your family because, you know, not one family is ever created the same, no matter what you do. So to keep that one family and keep on sacrificing to make things work and having the communication is the important thing. I slip up sometimes and get to tell my wife I'm going to stop my brother's house and it's, it's all hell broke loose. But it's the importance on being able to communicate the little things. Facts. Hell yeah. Hell so, yeah. No, I appreciate you breaking that down. You got my brain spinning like, yes, that's exactly. I got to schedule more. I got to plan more. There's an app. There's an app that can help me. It's Switch. called Cozy. C O Z I. Oh, C O Z. You can make it alert you, and then you can each person. I ain't on front. I, I'm in it right now. Look, I'm and it alerts you. It alerts everybody. So now check this out. Yeah, this is it right here. It's called the Cozy app. I don't know if you can see it, but it's called Cozy. And then, uh, damn, I don't know if you can see it. Maybe no, but I got it in my uh, in my notes. I'm for sure finna. Yeah, and then it has a calendar, and you write it, and it's, it tells everyone. Like I got ball alert on Mondays, and then um, I got I always got a staff meeting at the radio on Tuesday, and I put all my my club schedule. I update my club schedule on here if I get booked. Like I, I had, and then I got to remind wifey like, hey, don't forget June 11th. I'm gonna be gone all day. I'm, I got such and such going on June 11th. I'm gonna be gone. I got to do a car show. I got to do this. I got to do that. So, yeah. No, that's, no, bro. Dope. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, bro. Because you hey, just. Man, hey, man. I'm all for everybody winning, bro. Bro, that's that. the missing link that it was like, man, you know, that shit was stanking. And I got the missing link to close it. <laughs> now, hey, now, hey, now you, now you can hold her accountable. You could be like, hey, you got the alert. Because I got the alert. Game. And then we gonna be good because you know we always be like, man, I don't know what. Uh, come on, come when on. you have the alert and you can win the argument and she can't get mad because she got the alert too. Ah, oh, man, you gonna be over here like, you got it. Oh yeah, this moment was sponsored by Rari. <laughs> <laughs> Question number two. All right, if you could only eat one food for the rest of your life, what would it be? Ooh, pizza. Love pizza. I mean, I'm Caribbean. I'm Caribbean. My family's Caribbean, but I love pizza, man. Pizza over the uh, jerk and chicken? Now you're making me think some more, but I love pizza. I really, I don't know. And then my one, only one of my kids like pizza, just like me, me and Rari, my son. Um, he loves pizza, too. I can eat pizza every day, bro. I ain't going to lie to you. I can eat pizza every day. Bro, I managed a pizza place for like seven years, right? I gained so much weight. Yeah, I don't you saying yeah. that, but bro, oh, yeah. you actually in there every day? I love it. I'm a sucker for a New York style pizza too. I, I could eat that every day. I mean, and then of course my second it would be jerk chicken and white rice. I mean, that's my second. That's right underneath it. I can eat that every day too. But pizza, I love pizza, bro. Not Papa John's or Pizza Hut. I'm talking about a real New York style pizza. Thin crust. Thin the crust. Pizza sauce is right. It's mozzarella yep. cheese. You can have some provolone in there, some cheddar if you like. And have that motherfucker like right hand tossed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Let's get it. Question number three. What is something you hate but you wish you loved? Um, it could be anything. Anything. I've never thought about that before. I wish I loved. I don't know. You could pass. I mean, yeah, I guess I could pass because I don't know the answer to that. I don't know. I've never thought. I've never thought about that before. Uh, that's Maybe a little too. Hey, that's good. I'm gonna be <laughs> striking some some diamonds over here, getting some to shine. Uh, all right. Question number three. 
what is something that you've seen the, your kids do that had you just crying laughing? Laugh called crying laughing? How they interact with each other. I just think it's funny. You know, we're comedians over here at the house. So, uh, you know, people, I, I, I don't, I, I'm the parent that will pick on their own kid because when you go to school and someone pick on you, you not, you're going to eat that. Like you're going to eat that and have a comeback right away. Fire back. Because Fire I'm, back. I'm ready. Like, I'd be like, you know, if you got a pimple on your face, I'm going in on your ass. If, you know, you, whatever it could be, if your shirt's all, if you smell like onions that day, you've got put on deodorant, I'm going in on your ass. Like, uh, so how they react, how they interact with each other, they, they do the same thing. So my kids ain't gonna got that, that bully issue. Cause they, the bullies is want to be their friend or the bullies is mad at them or, you know, it's not no bully issue. I feel that. Yes. Nah, bro, my kids is the same way. My son, if he was here, he would bust in on me and roast me just because I'm doing an interview with somebody and call me a bucket head something within that time frame and be like, yeah, I got my dad. He a sucker today. Bro, you five years old. Calm your ass down. Yeah, little Rory, we play video games and he, boy, when I beat him, I, I, I don't let up. I let, I give it to him. We play Mario Kart on the Nintendo Switch. Oh, you got to beat me for real, bro. But see, you know the importance of that, not being like, you know, soft on your kids is when they finally do win, they do excel, they really get to enjoy the victory. Yeah, facts. I mean, same thing with baseball. Like I, in baseball, I remember he had a good game. He was hitting every baseball and he started showboating. I, but I said, boy. And then the next game, he had a terrible ass game. So, you know. Yeah, yeah. I'm that parent though. No, it's important, brother, because that I'm telling you, it creates a foundation that will last more than just just now. It takes them past just school in that game. It takes them for the life. And you know, that's that's the whole value. So my brother, you have survived my awareness segment, you survived my trading places segment, you survived my impulse Q and A. And as a result, let's promote, let's talk about what you're working on. I know you got a you know, you got your new single coming out, getting a DJ Khaled, DJ drama on. You know, uh, let me know. Let's promote. Let's talk about it. All uh, right, yeah. So uh, I dropped. I dropped my first record May fifteenth. It was called All Booties Matter. I'm dropping something called a, a three pack. Um, I've been doing mixtapes since 2018. Um, I've been I've been uh, branding the name Rari Talk. So anytime like this conversation is Rari Talk, you know, and me hosting a mixtape that's Rari Talk. Me interviewing somebody is Rari Talk. Uh, any type of thing with me talking. Is Rari Talk. So I've been branding that name for a while on the mixtape circuit, on live mixtapes and my mixtapes and all the websites. So now when I dropped a little, you know, my little mini EP, it's a Rari Talk. It's a three pack. Um, so this one's a three pack. I'm gonna drop a six pack, a Rari Talk six pack in, uh, in August. And then uh, the, the album's gonna be a 12 pack. So it's gonna be, you know, it's gonna be packs. No, that's all Rari Talk. See, you got me thinking about the OGs when you said 12 packs, because they'd be like, man, what you want from the store? And the OG would be like, give me a 12 pack of bitches. I mean, listen, bro, like, but you know, keep in mind, name recognition, themes, people like themes, people remember themes. That's one thing I learned in college. You know, if, if, if someone tells me, what did you learn from college, from going to college? People like themes. People pay attention to things like that, that Rory Talk. That's why I dropped Rory Talk mixtapes for a long time. So now it's just name recognition. You already expect Rory Talk. Oh, okay. Three pack. So the next one's going to be six pack. Next one's going to be 12 pack. You know what I'm saying? And then I'll figure out another theme after that. But yeah, you know, people like stuff like that. People pay attention. You know, I'm psychologically always paying attention. I'm inclined to shit like that. So um, the first one, the first installment is going to be three installments. The three pack it's just to get y'all a little taste. I dropped, I got a song called Black Lives Matter 2. Um, Cause you know, I mean, all lives of course matter, but it seems like black lives don't matter because if all lives truly matter, that means black lives will matter. So the song is called Black Lives Matter 2. Yes, and sir. I got four rappers in Atlanta who, who are dope. And I got them on the record, um, it's dope. Then I got a song called uh, 107. That's some Atlanta slang. Uh, Hunted, H-U-N-N-I-D on seven. Um, I got this new dope ass artist from Atlanta called, uh, his name's YDN. He gonna be popping soon. And then I got a song called Win, uh, VL Deck. I'm, it's, it's gonna get a lot of Rory talk on there. 
um, I'm gonna be talking on it. And um, yeah, man, um, I'm just, I'm getting my Khaled on, getting my drama on. And um, it's dope to be able to talk to DJ Drama. I had a conversation with him a couple of days ago and, you know, just to get his uh, co-sign for things that um, I'm doing right now. And he said he's paying attention. There are things I got going on, Greg Streets and DJ Screams and DJ Holidays. These are people I looked up to. So yeah, just the fact that I'm doing something now, Kenny Burns, anyone who's like a, a OG right now, um, I have their blessings and, you know, they tell me it's my turn. So I'm going to continue. And I, I'm always down for the work. So like how mustard was putting out stuff for a while for people before people started noticing, I'm down for the same thing. I'm put it out. And I know you're going to come back. People going to circle back. Cause all it takes is one record and I'm going to get, I'm going to get one record. One of these songs is going to blow. I actually got one, but it's not done yet. And I can't, I don't want to talk about it yet. I got a record. It's really dope. Um, it's just a hook, and I got to get these rappers on there, and these legendary rappers, boy, and these new rappers, boy, just to get them to to <laughs> knock it out. I got to remind people, and people got families, and people got kids, and people get money to do this. People got, I got you, Rory. I'm going to knock it out. And I'm over here like, hey, man, I'm going to have to pull up to your house. Like, I'm going to get this verse out the way because you're going to put me in a in a nice pocket when this song is out. So I got a big song I'm working on. Um, and when you hear it, you'll know. I huh. think it's gonna do something. So yeah. No, I'm excited for that. No, I, man. It, it, it's, I, it's a good record. I don't want to juice nothing out. I want that thing to stay full, full. Let it, let it get all the way right before you start juicing it out. No, I'm gonna I'm do my Khaled juice. I'm gonna put my because one thing I've learned from Khaled, he gonna talk, he gonna talk and talk, but then it's gonna, it's still gonna make sense because the song is gonna live up to the hype he's. He said it. That's one thing I've learned from him. If you're gonna hype a record, you bet you better damn sure make sure that's the record. And I I have one, and I know it's the record. Cause every person I let hear the record, which has only been a few people, they was like, "That's yours." I was like, "Yeah," <laughs> and I can't wait to get the right people on there. So you know, dope, yeah. bro, dope, dope, man. Uh, what's the goal long term? You know what what's what's next after you you know you get out this this uh these EP series? You know. What's the long-term goal? Man, I just want to, you know, continue to keep doing what I'm doing, uh, to live in my truth uh, and help the youngest. Like, I, I'm starting now that I don't really say that I'm a big dog because I, I look so high to my, my contemporaries and people I looked up to. But, you know, now that the fact that I'm in a space where people are considering me who I am and what I got going on, I want to, you know, uh, push it forward, you know? So I want to continue to look, for new talent. I signed three producers and I signed three songwriters. Um, uh, and I got this one major placement. I got my I got my little uh, my little board right here with all my stuff going on. Um, I got one big placement that's coming out soon uh, with my songwriter. I got one songwriter and one producer. He wrote the whole song and um, he produced the beat. So I just want to put people in position to win and put other people in position to make money. So uh, mm -hmm. that's what I my end goal would be, you know, once all this hype goes away with me and I think it's because there isn't a new version of drama. There isn't a new version of Khaled that my name is starting to circulate a little bit more now. And I think it's dope and I'm, a, I'm a, you know, I'm a appreciate it, but um, I'm going to use that to help some build somebody up. Mm. Mm. That's important. So Rory Talk Foundation is down the line. Nah, yeah, I already got the company. It's uh, two, three management. Um, two three management group, and um, I, I mean I got some stuff going, boy. I got I got I got three dope ass producers, and I gave them a guarantee. I told them I'm, all three of them got day jobs, but I told them I I get them out their day jobs by next summer. So summer tw 2021, I'm gonna have them rolling like, and I got them rolling already. We just the songs ain't come out yet. Once them songs come out, and people be like, who who did that? Who did that? And then they tell everybody they be like, oh yeah, holla at Rari. And my phone start ringing, I'm gonna start telling them like, now nah, I can go get a pub deal. Yep. I can get y'all boys out these jobs. You can get some studios in your house. You can start working at home. You know, get creative. Like, you, I could wake up every day and live in in my moment, live in my truth. When you have a day job, you got other shit going on. So like, I'm telling these guys, listen, man. Once y'all can get out that day job and y'all can 100% focus on producing you're going to be legendary because these guys are dope. 
and they, but they have day jobs. So, you know, I'm gonna get them out their day jobs. And once I get them out their day jobs, it's gonna be on and popping. Oh yeah, no, when you can get them to walk by faith and not by sight, they gonna really enjoy everything they see. No, they starting to see some small fruits of their labor. So it's going great, you know what I'm saying? So they, they kind of see the motivation and they happy. Like they starting to see, like we got this one placement. Uh, I don't know if you know, are you familiar with Johnny Blaze? She got a record called The Carlton is about to come out. It's fully written by my songwriter and fully produced by my producer. So um, they're super excited about it. It's a big campaign about to come out with that record. It's going to do good online. Um, it, it comes with the little the little Carlton dance, that little crazy shit. Um, it's going to do good. So they're happy about that. Dope. Oh. Oh. So, bro, before I get to closing out, I got to ask, where can we get a Rari hat? For everyone oh, on my website. So I had to work on my logo. So this is actually an old school Rari hat. Uh, Ferrari actually owns the font. So I had to, I had to create my own font. So I had my own Rari font. Uh, are you going to get LA baby? You can tell. It's a, it's a live interview, but they know I'm a family man. Okay. All right. Oh uh, yeah. I'm starving. You want to come say hi? Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Come on. I mean, she got hair like me, so her hair a little frizzy, but you know, that's that's the big girl right <laughs> so, Hi. How you doing? Hello. She gonna be my track star. She gonna run track like me. There you go, there you go. Keep right. on the plan. Uh, bye. Bye, see you later. What was the question again, my bad? Uh, no, I was asking, where can we get a Rari hat? Oh, so, oh all right, so funny story. So, uh, fine. Yeah, you know, so Ferrari owned the font, and I was selling my Rari hats. I was making some money, man. I got a letter, and I had to, you know, just continue these. So I made a new hat, new logo. People didn't even pay attention to the logo change. And uh, I'm working on a big deal with getting them in some stores. So, um, yeah, that's going to be a big deal. Um, they're going to be in stores. I don't think there are any in Cali. It's going to be on mostly East Coast, DTLR. Okay. Yeah, that's a big East Coast sneaker store. Um, I don't think there are any in Cali, but you, we're going to work on it. And you'll be able to go on my website right now, though, FerrariSellers.com, and then hit Rari merch. They're sold out because I haven't dropped the new line yet, but the pandemic has, has had me create recreate on the music side. So um, I do need to get back on my merch. I'm glad you said something about that. Oh, oh, I love No, I love it. I love it. You know, something good, you got to talk about it. You got to want it. You got to say something. <laughs> nah, facts. So, yeah, brother, you know this? House, I'm going to send you a few hats, though. I got you. Oh, salute, brother. So we all going to be rocking them out here in Cali for show, for show. Uh, bruh, so if you notice, the show is different. It's unique. You know, we got to have segments like them other guys, but we ain't doing segments like them. And, you know, I had to keep that same energy on how I close out. And, you know, the viewers knows it's coming. I'm about to hit you with it. You got any questions for me? Um, I don't, actually. I think uh, I think uh, what you're doing is dope. Um, I got to come out. I got to come out and uh, kick it with you in L.A. Um, I'm going to take a trip towards the end of the year. I'd be so focused on what I got going on. I, I don't go nowhere. If we go somewhere, we go for a vacation. But I do got to start taking some business trips to Cali because when I come to Cali, I come to relax and don't do nothing. I got to literally go come kick it, but I got to come out there on some business and work around and, work and move around. Yeah, you got to do one week business, that. one week chill. Facts. It do it like that. Uh, I, I love Cali. I love, I love it. You know what, aside of, you know what I like about Cali? Beverly Hills. I just think that area is just crazy. Like it reminds me of like the movies, like all oh, the lifestyle of the rich and famous in Beverly Hills. I don't know if I got a big ass check, would I want to live so lavish like that? I would like to put my money into something else. I'm, I, I wouldn't want to live as lavish as they do in Beverly Hills. Cause I stayed in a hotel, I forgot what hotel we was at. Uh, I stayed in a nice area. It was very expensive. I spent way too much money uh, when I was in uh, Beverly Hills. Like Beverly Hills. Yeah, parking and all that shit is so expensive. Gas, everything in Beverly Hills is expensive. But uh, yeah, yeah I, I just like that. The fact people who live in LA, man, you guys are dope. You guys are super cool. I love that you guys get to smoke weed all day, every day. You can walk down the street. I think that is super cool. I don't know if George is ever going to be like that. I hope so soon. 
I'm not a big weed head, but I I do enjoy um, marijuana. Oh yeah, shit! I smoke for the taste. Like the high ain't so much the thing; it's the taste. That shit, boy. I'd rather smoke that than a cigarette, cigar, anything else. You know what I really? You know what my favorite strand is wedding cake. Uh, that's a cookie strand. Yeah, and one of my one of my good friends, DJ Teflon, is a uh, uh, his DJ burner. That's burner, right? Cookies is burner. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, Bobby D. Bobby D. That presents my show. He's Snoop Dogg's agent, but he's also B. Real Burner's agent as well. I love wedding cake. Wedding cake. Whew. See, man. bro, you know, we gonna come out here and I'm gonna show you some strains, man, because I love strains. Like, yeah, and I've learned. And and certain strains, yeah, I've learned that different strains give you a different vibe. Some of them make you talk a lot. Some of them make you kind of just relax. Some of them deal with pain. You got to realize that weed is a, a stimulant. So whatever you want to do, literally you do it. Like it sort of enhances certain moments. Like if you got a sativa and you talking, you hit it, you feel me? You're going to talk a little bit more, but you ain't going to be cokehead talk. Like you get what I'm saying? It's, it's a big difference. Like weed's a stimulant. I don't mess with nothing else. Say no to everything else. But if you smoke weed, I ain't got no problem with you. So I, I appreciate you um, just giving me some shine, man. I'm just appreciative of the shine. I just, I never, I don't care for the attention, to be honest with you. I, I just want to do what I do best. I just want to help other people win. I felt like for me as a person, my job is to help people win. So that's why I stood on when a uh, little baby came to the radio station and I got in trouble for playing his record. I stood on, I stood on that because I really believed in, I felt like, I wanted to be a part of something that I felt was organically dope. Like Lil Baby to me is one of the dopest new rappers I've ever heard, you know? And he doesn't disappoint me anytime he drops a record. And um, I've, I heard that in 2017 when nobody else did and I just felt it. You know, I just get this feeling in my chest. I can't explain it with somebody. And if I feel that way about something, then I'm 99% right to me. But you know what's incredible about your adventure is that you're taking your opportunity, your platform, and you're risking it all for your beliefs. And you know what? You're getting actual results. It's like, you know, a lot of people think because, you know, you do bad things, bad shit happen, you go to jail. But if you do great things, great things happen, too. They always think it's only just the bad part. You got to focus on good shit happening, too. And right. you, know, you invest it all and, and, you know, take a risk. You know, you got to enjoy the reward. Right. So, no. I'm not, right. I appreciate you coming on here, bro. You told exclusive stories. It's contrast. Yeah, some exclusives, actually. You got some exclusives. You got the, I never talked about when me and Greg had that little argument, me and Greg Street. That was, that's an exclusive. Nobody, nobody got that. Now, so, you be so many send, things happening. I'm going to send this to Justin, and I can send it to you as well. Whatever you want to have omitted and cut out, we could for surely have that happen, because, you know, I want. Are you good, bro? I'm not, hey, right, bro. Every, I'm an open book. Whatever you want to use, you can use it, brother. Like, ain't nobody gonna say nothing. The same thing with the, I had a, a, a past interview that was on a major publication. Um, and, you know, shoot, yeah. DJ Drama and everybody can see it. They know what's up. Everybody know what's up. Anything I quote, happen. Ain't nobody gonna say otherwise. I respect it, bro. I respect it. Man, bro, I appreciate you, man. It's been an incredible opportunity. What's poppin', man? It's the kid Ferrari Simmons. You listening to Contrast Uncut. One time for Bobby D and my big dog, Uncle Snoop. It's hey. Ferrari Simmons. You know what's poppin'. Right there, there you go. Another episode of Contrast Uncut. Make sure if you enjoyed it, you leave a comment below. You hit some like buttons. You hit some uh, subscribe. You go ahead and hit share if you want to. Say something nice or say something you don't want to say at all. You're not going to hurt my feelings. Comment below. Did, did